Hi, we're looking at a new type of camera called a Micro Four Thirds. Now, this is a different standard to either a digital SLR or to a compact digital camera. It's a joint venture between Panasonic and Olympus, and now both of these major manufacturers have their own models on the market. This one here is the Panasonic GH1. Now, this looks on the surface rather like a digital SLR, but it's actually much, much smaller. It has the interchangeable lenses that you would expect with a digital SLR. But the body kit itself is a great deal smaller, and that's because the Micro Four Thirds cameras, they don't have an internal mirror or pentaprism, which you would expect with a digital SLR. This helps to keep the body much, much smaller, but it does change the way the camera works. For example, with the digital SLR, when you look through the viewfinder, what you're going to see is exactly what you'll see through the lens. However, with the Micro Four Thirds, in this case the GH1, you have an electronic viewfinder. Now the other camera we're looking at today is the Olympus EP1, or the Pen camera from Olympus. Now this is a very different design of camera to anything we've seen in quite some time. It's got a quite deliberately retro look about it. But one thing you might notice is there's actually no viewfinder at all on this camera. For people who are more used to using a digital SLR, it might be a bit of a frustration the first time you come to use this, because you're limited to looking through the LCD screen only. Another situation that you're going to need this hot shoe is if you want to attach a flash, because there's no flash built into the camera itself. Now the flash for the Olympus Pen is also a very retro design. So you do end up with this very unusual looking camera, which some people might find quite appealing. Now the Panasonic GH1 does actually have its own flash built in. And you also have the option of adding an external flash via the hot shoe point. So this might seem more like a conventional camera for people who are used to using a digital SLR, because you have a built-in viewfinder and a built-in flash, as well as the hot shoe for adding whatever else you'd like to. Now both of these cameras pride themselves on HD film recording. Now this is something we're seeing more and more in uh, compact cameras and occasionally in digital SLRs. And the, uh, the Panasonic GH1 has really marketed itself on its HD film recording. Another advantage is it has its own stereo mic built in. Now if this isn't quite enough for you, you can also attach an external microphone via the hot shoe attachment. So this will make the camera even more flexible when you're trying to get the very best sound quality in your videos. Now the real question is, why would you go for one of these Micro Four Thirds cameras instead of a digital SLR or indeed a compact digital camera? Now one of the advantages these cameras do have over compact digital cameras is much larger image sensors. This will make the Micro Four Thirds cameras much more sensitive in low light conditions, so you can take shots in low light conditions without the grainy image effect which can ruin photography with compact digital cameras. However, the image sensors in a Micro Four Thirds camera aren't often as large as you can find with a digital SLR so you might find a better low-light performance in a more top-end digital SLR model. Obviously, this Olympus Pen is quite an unusual body kit just to look at, but you can see it's pretty slim, certainly a great deal smaller than you get with most digital SLRs, and actually it is quite slimmer than with the Panasonic GH1. However, as we've said before, it's a little bit more limited. It doesn't have that viewfinder attachment. It doesn't have a flash of its own. And with the GH1, you actually get a retractable screen, which is an advantage some people are quite keen on. It gives you a bit more flexibility when you're taking shots in certain conditions, like holding the camera above your head. So it remains to be seen whether the Micro Four Thirds standard is going to be a success or not. But one thing's for sure, both of these manufacturers are backing these models to be quite successful. Olympus has more models planned for the year ahead, and we're sure Panasonic won't be far behind. For now, they're quite expensive cameras to consider. For example, the GH1 currently costs around £1,300. But as the Micro Four Thirds standard gets more established, we can expect prices to drop and become more competitive with entry-level digital SLRs. So this could tempt more users to the Micro Four Thirds standard. Now for more reviews of digital cameras and digital SLRs, check witch.co.uk, where you can also find even more information on the Micro Four Thirds cameras.